Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm not going to offer any easy answers today. I don't think this is easy. I think this is really hard, and I think it's going to tax us all to think about how we can move these things forward. So today, I'm going to try and think about what the driving forces are, what the key issues are, and help us to focus on that. Digital has come upon us maybe over the last two years. Initially, it was just a sort of an echo in the background, and everybody sort of nodded sagely when they heard the word. But now it's really starting to have an impact on everybody in organizations, not just the tech parts. Learning is going to be the fundamental differentiator for competitive advantage. What population, percentage of the world population, own a smart mobile phone, not just an ordinary mobile phone for telephones, a smartphone. What percentage of the population as of today? Any ideas? 50% of the world population have access to a smartphone. That's more computing power than took us to the moon on an individual basis. Our access to information, our access to knowledge is shaking and pacing massively, which means unless we in organizations can really understand, we have to throw out some of the old models and think again about the speed of learning, the speed of progression, the speed of which we enable people, we're going to have problems. Digital is not about the technology. It's about the behavior. It's about, as the previous speaker touched on in innovation, the mindset. It's not digital is doing this to us, but we need to think about and change our leadership in adopting and changing to the fact we're going to have to think in different ways, behave in different ways, act in different ways. And our leaders are fundamental to doing that. This is a massive opportunity, but it's also scary. This is scaring a lot of organizations to their core. A lot of organizations are unsure how to progress with this changing world. So, what do they do? In terms of digital, what are they doing? I talked to a uh, senior uh, ops director in a um, top 200 law firm just two weeks ago, and I asked them what their uh, digital strategy was. The reply was, I think we're going to do something with Skype next year. Now, that really frightened me. What's happening in the legal firm? Are they being disrupted at all in the legal world? You can bet your bottom dollar they are. What are customers wanting these days? Gartner reported again just two days ago, three days ago, how digital was starting to help their employee satisfaction rates because they were providing rich data, informed information to their clients. In other words, they weren't having clients hanging on the line waiting to be told information. They could access it quickly. Information that is easily accessible, easily understood, easily shared. Levels of maturity. Organizations are having to think about, well, what does this mean to us? What was Uber able to do with digital? Completely shook the market, crushed it to the core, disrupted it totally. What is digital doing to banking? What's Bitcoin going to do to banking? Do you need a bank if you've got a Bitcoin account? No, you don't. So organizations have this choice about, do we jump in with both feet? Do we stand off and think about it? And most organizations are sort of taking a hybrid approach to how they're introducing digital. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Anybody aware of the bank, Dutch bank ING? What's ING done recently with its whole structure? About two or three years ago, redesigned the whole organization from the bottom up with customer at the core and using digital as an enabler. Check out Spotify, how it lives its world. You take your average organizational diagram, nah. We need to fundamentally think different about how we perceive and think about what organizational development is doing. Rethink the business from the bottom up. and Don't tinker around the edges. So doing the same, doing more of the same, doing what we've always done is not going to work. Organizations have to fundamentally rethink. And even in Statel's case, it was interesting to listen to the presenter talking about how they've had to seriously shift what they do, and they dig oil out the ground. So how much impact surely could digital have? Well, you listen to the speaker. We have to change. We have to think, sense the geitzeist of how our people are going to want to work in their organization. And KPIs top down doesn't cut it anymore. So key strategic leadership challenges we need to think about when we are selecting, developing, honing leaders. 
First is really poor understanding from our senior managers. Do they know what digital means? If you asked your senior board, do they really have a good handle on what digital means, what answer are you going to get? Some might. How much time do they spend rubbing shoulders with Gen Y? How much time do they get out and actually understand what disruption means, how organizations can reform what they do and rethink and reinvent themselves? I worry that they're not getting out enough in understanding this. The lack of direction, it's a difficult world. Demographics, age population, north-south, digital impact on jobs. 30% of technical IT jobs will be gapped by 2020, Gartner reports. 30% holes in our ability to do digital because we just don't have the right skills, the right knowledge on the ground to enable that to go forward. And then the old chestnut, which has always been there, we know from an HR perspective is always there, it's really hard to get this to work. It's really hard to get boards to do something fundamentally different. And that's why going and looking at what ING has done and what startup garage world of Spotify did from the start, but it had the benefit of it was starting. It could structure itself in that way. But if ING can do it, then all organizations can do it, and they have to. So what does this mean for how we develop our leaders? Well, we have to fundamentally change. And Drucker was right. We've sort of got this philosophy that says, once we give you a label, once we give you a name, once we call you that thing, the leader, you will be able to lead, which means you tell people what to do. What's the problem with telling people what to do in this new world? They're not going to want to do it. We need to get leaders who are able to build consensus, build meaning, build understanding. And that might not necessarily be your fastest, best, brightest, tallest, most beautiful. Again, very interesting to hear the speakers talk about the importance of purpose, the importance of values. I smile when I hear organizations use these terms these days, because there's a huge difference between talking about it and actually doing it. And when you say, well, what is the purpose? Well, the purpose is to make more money, surely. What's the problem? What is the problem? Is capitalism getting an easy ride these days? Are we all happy with the capitalist model? Are we all sure that the wealth distribution is going the right way and we're looking after those people who need to be looked after and actually we're solving world problems? Is that going well for us? No, it's not. A lot of people, not just the intelligentsia, not just the liberal left, Common sense people are actually saying, wait a minute, this sounds broken. This is not working. We need something that's different. And back to those organizations, I think, who are truthful and start to be honest and open and say, we do need to do something different. We can't just do what we've done. We can't just be driven by the markets, driven by short-term quarterly targets. We really need to think about what the core purpose is and do it properly and then start to get that around. That's a challenge. That's a challenge for boards. It's a challenge for middle management. Or over in the past, we've heard from Nigel saying, well, yeah, that's all very well. Heard it before, but we won't do it. We'll just let the new fads pass us by and we'll be left. Well, actually, no, we've got to do it. We've got to crack on. If you look at what ING have done, if you look at what Spotify do, this idea of getting groups of people together with common interests, common passions, aligned, multidisciplined teams, of people who actually get up in the morning and want to go to work. They actually want to hang out in that place called work. What does work do to make it a good place? What things does work do to make it a good place to live? Treats at, treats at lunchtime? Cheap canteen? Well, hygiene. Fundamentally, again, Nigel said it, giving people that sense of purpose, that sense of really doing something that's worthwhile, fundamental. Autonomy, key spates, this idea of being agile means you're not being hung up by hierarchy, hung up by waiting for the boss to make a decision. You're on it, you're in it, you're doing it. You know that what you're doing is aligned with everybody else, that's okay, but you have an ability to get this thing going and not be waiting for this hierarchy to catch up and tell you it's okay. 
And if you make a mistake, what happens in this new world? If the team makes an error, what happens? Does it get fired? What did Deming say was one of the key deadly sins in an organization? Fear. So are you going to be innovative and collaborative and share in all this brave new world if you're frightened of losing your job? No. Teams like this have got to feel secure. Fail? We'll talk about it in a moment. We need to look at this as a second chance for leadership to real think how we can take this world forward in this fourth industrial revolution. Collaboration, we've talked about, absolutely essential. Who remembers Kodak? Kodak was the first company to invent the digital camera. What happened to Kodak about five years ago? It went bust, yeah. And yet it was the first organization to invent the digital camera. Steve Sessoms did it, very bright guy. Why did it bury the digital camera? It was afraid. What was it afraid of? Yeah. We're afraid digital is going to steal our core market. We're afraid that this brave new world is going to do our sales targets harm. What do we need to do when we hear that as HR people? We need to call it out. We need to challenge it. We need to say, no, that's wrong thinking. We need to think about how we can embrace this, not be frightened of it. What does this mean? Sure, it might mean a garage concept, as Nigel was said, or it needs a forge, or it needs a foundry, or it needs a small protective group that we can take the new idea forward and embrace it and grow it and then share it and the organization. We don't have to. We can take, as I said, a hybrid approach to this. But what is important is we don't kick it out. So what does this mean in terms of our leaders? Well, let's take our strategic leaders. I'm going to call these new CEOs, these new board members, orchestrators in that the way they have to lead and think about taking their organization forward. In the past, they had ownership of knowledge, they had ownership of talent, they had ownership of all the skills and resources they need to control. In this brave new world of digital, they don't own anything. So how are they going to acquire it and use it? They have to earn it. They have to go out and work with and collaborate and build community and build society and build and bring in and orchestrate. And people have to be comfortable to be in the same space, to do the same shared purpose. And that's a fundamental different change for the way we think about senior leaders. Less ego more soul. What about our operational leaders, operational level? Well, I'm calling these flock, shepherds, same sort of idea. Checking on alignment, checking on resources, enabling, supporting those paced teams below them to solve problems, unblock issues, do more innovation, do more creation, do more good thinking that meets customers expectations, develops customer experience, makes things better for customers. There's no command and control in this. What sort of skills do we need these leaders so far to have at this level? How are they going to, are they going to bully people to do that? Much better. Interpersonal social communication. This is hard. As a colleague of mine said, this is not about soft skills, this is about sharp skills. And this has to be sharp, because if this is going to work, if you're going to bring all these dispersed groups of external people, gig economy workers, professionals like me, who work by the hour, by the day, by the month, by the week, into this new place of organization, then we have to be able to make them feel at home, and make them feel okay to hang out and do good work. That's a new set of skills for leaders. And team level, tactical level. Again, more of the same, but more, perhaps more focused on the task, as good teams do. But again, we heard about the importance of environment. We heard about the importance of space. We heard about the importance of how these teams work. Do we lock them in a room and ask them to be innovative? IBM tried it. I want you to be innovative on a Tuesday at 4.30 for 40 minutes. 
doesn't work. Nigel said that in his presentation, exactly the same. These people have to feel that they're encouraged and enabled to work at pace, to work at speed, to access the information that they need to be creative, to get things done and achieve in this little tribe, this little group that knows it's collaborating with lots of other groups and in an aligned sense, so we're achieving our mission, our purpose, but I'm not being watched by the boss every 30 seconds. I'm autonomous. I have responsibility. I'm treated actually like an adult, and if there's issues, then I'll flag them up. I'm not looking over my shoulder every 30 seconds to see if I'm going to be performance reviewed or measured. My measure is the transparency of which we're achieving, and everybody can see that. There's trust. So this is a new world. This is a bit scary for us because we're perhaps quite used to thinking linearly, straight lines. We're not in a straight line world anymore. We're in a very fluid world where we need to stand back quite a lot and look at the changes and understand what's going on. And just because it's not in a straight line, we shouldn't be too freaked by that. Boston Consulting Group says, yeah, there's a lot going on, but the good practice of making people feel in an organization that they're governed in a constructive way is essential. That from an organizational development perspective, which is our bread and butter, we're doing the things that we need to do to make people feel engaged and responsive and able to deliver. Fundamental. So we're in the thick of it. We're in the middle of this chaos. We might not understand how it's going to end, but as long as we perhaps take the lead from those swallows and understand that it's big, it's moving, it's changing, but individually we can help steer and control, and then we can have better influence on how we develop our leaders and make them effective at dealing with chaos. Folks, that's the end of my presentation. Happy to take any questions. Thank you.